What's up, YouTube? It's Ali Beans, and today we're going to be doing a Pulsar X Lite V2 review. We're also going to be comparing it to the Pulsar X Lite V2 Mini. Now, the Pulsar X Lite V2, as well as the X Lite V2 Mini, are wireless ergo gaming mice. I've been using both of these for a while now, and I do love them both. So let's get right into the Pulsar X Lite V2 review and comparison. <laughs> Here we have my Pulsar X Lite V2 in blue and my X Lite V2 Mini in white. The X Lite V2 is an ergonomic gaming mouse. Now that's this angle here, this little angle right here, not being flat like on a G Pro wireless. See how that's just straight across and this has an angle to it. That's what makes it an ergonomic gaming mouse. Now, it's not quite as ergonomic as, say, this Anchor vertical mouse. An Anchor vertical mouse, this has an angle of about 45 degrees, and this angle here is about 25 degrees. So it's a much more gradual of an angle. But it is enough that your hand is not lying flat like it would be on the G Pro. It is a little bit of an angle here, so you can see flat here, and then this tilts it up just ever so slightly. And that's the ergonomic part of this. Now with that out of the way, and it does actually do that very well. It actually helped with my wrist pain. I no longer have to wear a wrist rest, and it's because of ergonomic mice like this. The Ponage Ultra Custom also has that gradual 25 degree slope there. So let's get right into the dimensions here. Again, we have the X Lite V2 in blue and the V2 Mini in white. And so the length of the V2 is 4.83 inches or 122.66 millimeters. The width on the V2 is 2.6 inches or 66.17 millimeters. And then the height is 1.65 inches or 42 millimeters and the weight on this bad boy is just 59 grams now comparing that to the mini and this is really the only difference is the size and weight the length let's put this back down here actually the length is 4.6 inches or 117 millimeters the width is 2.52 inches or 64 millimeters and then the height is 1.57 inches or 40 millimeters, and the weight is 55 grams on that one. So the difference between the two, the medium is 5.6 millimeters longer, just 2.17 millimeters wider, two millimeters taller, and it's about four grams heavier. And that does actually make a difference when you're using it. I prefer this one for gaming and this one for day-to-day -day work. But I'll, I'll switch it up depending to match with my keep, of course. And so, yeah, let's move right into the specs. All right, and here we are on the Pulsar website. And we are on the listing for the X-Lite V2. And the X-Lite V2 and the X-Lite V2 Mini share the same internal. So this is going to cover both of them. And so here under sensor, this is what we're going to be looking at right now here. It uses a PAW3370 sensor. It's a great sensor. It's really fast and really efficient, which is great for performance as well as battery life since it's a wireless mouse. You can check out how the 3370 stacks up against other sensors on sensor.fyi slash sensors. I'll have a link to this and links to all the mice mentioned in this video and everything else down in the description below for you as well. The 50 to 20,000 DPI is pretty standard. Most people don't use over two to 3,000 DPI anyway. For reference, DPI is dots per, yeah, dots, dots per inch. It represents how many dots or pixels your mouse moves on the screen for every one inch of physical movement. Now, IPS is inches per second. Inch, so 400 IPS here means you can move the mice, mouse up to 400 inches a second and it will keep up and not lose tracking. So it's a measurement of speed capability of the mouse. 
Now, for example, my big desk mat is only 35 inches. Even factoring lots of quick micro movements, you're not going to outpace this, right? Uh, you're not going to go 400 inches per second. Now, the acceleration on the mouse here, this part here, is when the mouse will move further on your screen if you move it faster physically. That's what acceleration is. This should really say max acceleration, though, because this is technically the limit on how fast you can move the mouse and it still have it track it accurately for that acceleration not to kick in. Then, of course, the 1,000 hertz or 1 millisecond polling rate item here. That means that the mouse sends feedback on its updated position to your computer 1,000 times a second. Plenty fast. Gone are those days where you're like, oh, no, I need a wired mouse to be competitive. Plenty of people are out there winning championships with wireless mice. Pulsar X Lite V2 can keep up with them. Now, the 32-bit ARM processor. Having a 32-bit ARM processor means that the mouse can handle its own calculations and processes. This is what allows most of the extra features and adjustments you can make on the mouse, especially in the software. So let's actually jump right into the software now. All right, so here we have the software for the Pulsar X Lite V2, and the same software works for the X Lite V2 Mini. Depending on which mouse you have plugged in is which one it will be editing. It works fine for the both versions I have. Uh, on my machine at the same time and so up top here you know set your language this settings cogwheel is really only for your firmware update and then we have three main sections here we're going to be looking over this section first which is where you are binding all your buttons they come default you know one is left click two is right click three is wheel click four is forward and five is back notice there is no dpi button the DPI is set by holding one, three, and four, so left click, wheel click, and forward down for three seconds. And that'll change the light associated with that DPI setting as well that we'll get into on this part here. Then we have, you can import or export your profiles. Everything's saved on the mouse itself. And I think it does it in like a .jma file, which is like an old Nintendo file, which I found pretty funny. Um, and um, this, again, the settings are saved on the mouse. You have debounce here, and debounce is a span of time after a click when new click signals will not register, right? So if I click, and if I click again within three milliseconds, it's not going to register, and that's to avoid sometimes when a mouse bounces a, very ever so slightly and it reads it as another click. All right. Then we have the DPI settings here. You can have multiple settings. I do 800 and 1600 personally, and this is the color associated with it. Um, 800 I use for gaming, 1600 I use for work, and you can have multiple extra stages as well. You can control the lighting. And then again, that polling rate is how many times it sends the updated position of the mouse to your computer. Load on distance stands for, uh, sorry, load on distance, that's for games. Uh, LOD stands for lift off distance. This refers to the height of when a mouse will stop sensing movement, aka tracking, when it is lifted off the mouse pad. And so lower than three millimeters is usually optimal and where, you know, we have one <laughs> and two. So definitely in, in good ranges there. And ripple controlling and angle snapping, those are both types of smoothing. And so what that will do is say you're using a really high DPI or you just have jittery mouse movements or anything of that nature. This can help to smooth those out and they do it in different ways. I'm not going to, you know, split hairs there for you. And then we have your mouse sensitivity. That's pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty self-explanatory. Uh, improved pointer precision. Um, I don't really know what that does, to be honest with you. Uh, your scrolling speed changes the scrolling wheel and how fast it will scroll up or down. And then scroll one page essentially turns each click in the scroll wheel into that page up and page down button. So it will scroll an entire page up or down for each increment scrolled and then the double click speed is in what time span you have to click the mouse twice 
in order for it to be registered as a double click. And this is in milliseconds. I have mine at 550 milliseconds. So that means if I double click within, you know, say in 500 milliseconds, it'll count as a double click versus two single clicks. If I do it in 600 milliseconds or 551 milliseconds, they will count as separate clicks. And then here we have macros. You essentially start recording and then you can program your mouse to do other actions. I'm not going to get into the full system here because most macro systems are pretty self-explanatory. But there you go. The software also doesn't take up much space, much resources. Again, everything is saved on the mouse itself. So you can just shut down the software and not have to have it running in the background, even though it is really minimal. So as you probably guessed by now, I really like the Pulsar X Lite V2, both the medium as well as the mini version. But since they use USB-C, which you can't see there because I'm using the mod I'm about to show you, they weren't as convenient for me as the G Pro with my charging dock. And by the way, I did a review on this dock and it works fantastic. I'll link that up, up above somewhere for you. So this was a lot more convenient for me versus having to plug a USB-C cable. I mean, at least it's USB-C instead of micro, you know, or something like that. But I still wanted something easier. So I went and I found this. This is a magnetic USB-C charging cable. It comes with two pieces, the cable itself and this little USB-C insert, you see as a USB-C side and then a magnetic side. And that's what you're seeing here. And so to charge this every night, I just have it tucked away over here and I have a little cable anchor so the cable stays in place and then boom, that's it. And this brand is Kula. I did try some others and they all didn't fit. You really need the oval here, but best, pre best bet, excuse me, is probably just use the link I'm going to put down below and you'll, and you'll know it should work. Well, at least it worked on mine and it does work on my Pulsar as well. I've used these on a bunch of my so far and they seem to fit all of them quite nicely. There you go. A nice mod to make this great Pulsar X Lite V2 even better by making charging easier. And charging, I charge these probably once a week, um, but I do use, you know, a bunch of mice, right? I've got a bunch of mice here and even more than this. Um, so your use may vary, but I didn't notice any issues. That's for damn sure. And there you have it. The Pulsar X Lite V2 and the X Lite V2 Mini are great wireless ergo gaming mice. They would be absolutely perfect for me if they just had a DPI button. But even without a DPI button, they've both made it into my daily rotation. I've been preferring the Mini for gaming and the regular for my regular work, whether it's writing content or coding. Now, if you found the video helpful, I'd appreciate considering giving a like, maybe even hit that subscribe button and that bell if you want to be notified when I put out new content. I'm Ollie Beans. I'll see you in the next video. Be good to each other.